That's the Peace Walker, man. Peace be with you. You know what I'm saying? The real Peace Walker. You know who you are, man. So anyway, it's good to see all my friends here. It's so great to have friends. Where will we be without friends, right? Now, I don't have any kind of guitar behind me. What am I here just to talk? Hey, guitars, 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 guitars. Let's talk about another guitar. No. no, no. Usually when I don't have a guitar behind me, it's because I got a weird instrument story for you. And I got a fucking humdinger. It took me like 20 minutes alone just to figure out what the hell the instrument was after I got it from the flea market. After I saw it, I was like, I need to have that instrument. You know what I mean? I paid 30 bucks for it. You know what I mean? Never saw anything like it before. It's like part, like, backpacker guitar, part sitar, and part typewriter, man. Manual typewriter. Old manual typewriter. I saw the box on the floor. I thought it was like an old oboe case, man. And then it said, sing musical instruments on it. Sing from, from India, man. Sing Musical Instruments was established in 1920. They distribute exotic Indian instruments all over the world. They're in Mumbai. You know what I'm saying? It's usually the weird stuff they distribute. So I took this. This is the box right here, man. You see that box, man? And I opened it up, man. And I was like, what the hell is this? You know what I mean? And see how these are like this? You know what I mean? Figure like that's the way it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Flip it up. And I opened it up, man. What the hell is that, man? And I was like, ooh, look at that. Holy f the hell? Strange, man. Strange thing. Now, this particular instrument I found is called a bulbul tarang, which in, in Indian means you know, a wave of nightingales. It's actually an instrument that was sort of evolved in the 1920s, 1930s, based off a Japanese instrument, the taishigoto which was pretty much invented around 1912 in Japan by a fellow by the name of Morito, I believe. I think his name was. If memory serves me correct from the internet. And this instrument went all over the world, you know what I mean? In East Africa, the Taishigoto was actually still a very popular instrument. But this particular instrument, you know what I'm saying? Also called the Indian Banjira, or the Indian Banjo, or the Punjab Banjo. It's a humdinger, man. It's a humdinger. So I'm going to flip you around. We're going to look at it. It needs like a little bit of work done to the strap to it. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, maybe a little bit of tuning. So it's going to be a quick one. I don't really have too much else to say other than what I just told you. So you know what I mean? Maybe I'll try to play it. I don't even know if I'll be able to play it, man. But anyway, peace be with you. Look after yourself. That's what I got to say, man. So, let's take a look at it, shall we? I'll flip you around. Well, here it is, folks. Gorgeous, gorgeous thing, man. Wonderful instrument, man. You see the, the, you know what I mean, swirling detail in the wood and the case. It's an integral part of this. I'm thinking this thing's late 50s, early 60s, and I'll tell you why in a second. Now, when I was carting it through this big flea market, I was holding it by this handle. You know what I'm saying? Now the actual strap is nailed on and it also has a tack going through this. And I had the wherewithal to notice it was falling off. If this fall fell off on the ground at a crowd of flea market, I never would have been able to recover it. So that's really the only work, you know what I mean, needs to be done to this, this instrument. I'm going to call it a guitar, man. This instrument, man, guitar-like instrument. Let's put that back on here. Because it is pretty much in tune, man. This is painted like a, a black. Now, instruments from India are never going to be like a Les Paul. Always going to be a little bit jacked up looking. Especially these folk instruments. This is very similar to what we saw in that old uh, Oscar Schmidt zither. The auto harp. You see in there, it's kind of like a little, like a little fretboard in there. With all those strings. And these little things come down. Now, basically, it is in tune. This this string is tuned to a different thing. And this last string up here is tuned to something different. All these strings in the middle are all tuned the same. See? And it's all still in tune, man. That's great. Now, I've dated it using this plastic. This plastic looks like a 50s kind of plastic, especially in India. 
So you can see little like metallic in there, man. Even little pieces of like, you know what I mean? Whatever. Pop plastic, my friend. So this is like second generation of plastic. They're melting all the plastic down from like the 40s. You know what I'm saying, man? Reusing it, putting all their little things in there. That's what I'm thinking, just by looking at it. You know what I mean? All slotted screws and these little tiny like finishing nails. Finishing nails doing most of the heavy lifting. This is so you can, you know, remove it. If you got to, you know what I mean? Do some service work to it, I suppose. So, here it is, man. Now, I'm going to uh, just put this on a tripod here. And just, I mean, I was just playing with it for a little while, and I've sort of figured out how to play it. So I, I can't, you know what I mean, with this tripod, you know what I mean, this little selfie stick or whatever, really play it. So I'm just going to put it on a little tripod and show you how it's done from this angle. You know what I'm saying, right now, before we even mess with it. You know what I'm saying, and then we'll have a command performance. I have a good idea. You know what I mean? After we repair it, man. But I'll give you a real quick demonstration right now on how it's done. These were all, you know what I mean, the majors and the minors. So, let me put this on the tripod. Alright, so uh, essentially the business is all done right here over the sound hole. I got a, just a regular pick. Some musicians use a bow on this, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like an Indian bow. So it's a folk instrument, man. So there's no right way to do it. I don't use a bow on anything. I'm not a bow player. You know what I'm saying? The uh, only thing I put a bow on is a Christmas present, man. Birthday present if I don't have a gift bag. So I basically, you know, easy. It, man, you know what I mean? It's like pretty good. See, so I mean, it's it's a cool little fun little thing, man. Now these old ones, it's kind of frustrating because these things get bent very easily, like a real cheap typewriter. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be constantly rearranging them. You know what I mean? So they're not only, you know what I'm saying, straight, and they don't bang in the other ones, but they're like, you know what I mean, going right over the fret also. You know what I mean, just things to think about, man. But it's cool. The newer ones have like like a keyboard, you know what I'm saying? A lot of them have like a, uh, like a little auto harp too on the side. Uh, what's that called? A Swar Mandela, I believe, in India. It's a little, pretty much just an auto harp, I believe, with 10 strings and varying different, you know what I mean, notes going up the scale. So they would have a little harp on this side, the modern ones, man. But this is the real deal, holy field, man. I'm saying, like I said, late 50s, early 60s. So what we got to do now, folks, I want to fix it, man. I want to fix it up nice. I want to put this guy back on there. So I'll see you in the lab, man. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll figure out a way that we're not going to lose this piece in our journeys, man. And then we'll get like a proper glam shots real quick, man. And then we'll have a little extravaganza. You know what I'm saying? I just keep, uh, keep filling you guys up with surprises. Peace be with you. All right, so here we are in the lab, man. Kind of embarrassed even calling this like a work episode. We're not doing anything, really. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to, you know what I mean, clean this. You know what I mean? The dirt is kind of like a patina on these old folk instruments you know what I'm saying? I don't want to mess anything up I don't want to damage an old sticker you know, it's irreplaceable you know what I mean you can't fake the funk on something like that there's nothing really to clean on it I'm not you know what I mean taking this on the road I just want to get that you know what I mean tack back in there now let's take a look here see how this moves around freely and there's a tack here this old strap here is still in excellent condition you know what I'm saying? It's like being you know, like some kind of nylon. Nylon material. Anyway, see the hole? I want you to get the gizzard hole. There's the hole right there. That's where a little termites come in and they're right there. <clears throat> so we're going to take a little bit of this here crazy glue. Get it in there thoroughly. Get a whole drop of it. Put this real sharp tack back. 
You know what I'm saying? Make sure you put this in between the sandwich. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to leave out the bologna. And you'll just have a mustard sandwich, people. We want to do it carefully. You want to mess up anything. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to get glue on anything. It's got to be done correctly. Man. Alternatively, we could just, you know, stick the tack in a little bit above it. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe even a little bit below it. And probably do the same thing, but I want it to be, you know what I mean? I want it to be like the same hole, man. I don't want him to find a new wife now that he's here in America, man. With his little pool jammy, man. So let's get this thing all fixed up, man. I see you at the glamour shots, man. I have a couple of little tales to tell, man. And there it is, folks. A real box's box, man. What a box master, man. So, I mean, I've already showed it to you. I'll show it to you again. <laughs> I want you to get a good look at the inner workings. You know, look at look at the typewriter key like shit going down on that on that fretboard. And see, look at the fretboard itself. How the frets are real small, like mandolin size frets. setup is so ancient, you know what I'm saying? These little, little stickers. Luckily, none of these stickers fell off. You know what I'm saying? Isn't that like luck? It's all like recycled wood, probably. You know? Which is great. A little sound, sound board. Does it say something in there? You might. Look at that. You might actually say something. Maybe not. Maybe just like a, a striggle. Number something. There's some kind of notation in here, man. What's that say? I don't know, man. Got an X marks the spot. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I started talking at the beginning of this little vlog today about, you know, what I mean, friends. Where would we be without friends? Luckily, I got a lot of friends that are mostly, you know, musically inclined. Many of them, you know. And uh, my one, my one friend, Ricky D, man, he's like a mu musical genius, man. You know. Last week, I had him and Bass Mark over here jamming out, and uh, Bass Mark just put his, his instrument down. He's like, I can't even play with this guy, man. I said, Hey, man, he's like a, Ricky's like a natural treasure, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't feel intimidated, man. Just enjoy, you know what I mean, your time with him, you know? The bass box, I just put my instrument down, man. Ricky was jumping from one instrument to another, you know what I mean? Seamlessly. You know, bass, the guitar, the drums, the, you know, whatever needs to be played, man. The keys. You know, whirlwind. One of my pleasures in life, man, is like, you know, when he comes by, you know what I mean? Put one of these weird instruments in his hand, you know? And just watching them, you know what I'm saying? Like, jam out for it on the first time. You know, many instruments that we f featured here. I love, you know what I mean? I, hey, man. You know what I'm saying? He really loved that dulcimer, you know, from a couple weeks back, man. As do I. You know what I'm saying? And it is kind of vexing, man. When you see somebody, you know what I mean, just pick up that good and be making up some, you know, incredible sounds out of something they've never even seen before. So I'm gonna do that, man. I'm gonna. You know, he didn't even know I'm gonna come by, man. I'm gonna call him up, say, "Hey, man, I'm in. The, I'm in the area. I'm gonna stop in real quick." You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna put this right in this, in this grill right there at the Asbury Circle, man. You know what I'm saying? Put the camera on. You know what I mean? Like, hey, man, let's see what happens. So I want you to witness that magic, as I always do, man. You know what I mean? It's a true joy in life, man. To watch genius. Let's go down in the Asbury Circle, man. Look after yourself. Peace be with you. Look after yourself.
That's beautiful. Ricky D, my brother, thank you so much. Folks, peace be with you. The uh, Bulbul Tarang from, what's the name of the company there? Sing, Sing, Sing Musical Instruments. Musical Instruments. Probably from the late 50s, early 60s. Peace be with you, people. God bless you.